uh, of a very sharp part of user experience. The A. This is your best visual tool. Visual tool is not a software. The first visual tool is my eye. So that's what only we are going to talk about. And the purpose of the conference is to uh, let you know that the user make big decisions about your interface in absolute blur. He doesn't see what you mean to say and decides to leave or go. That's what we are going to try to, to seek. So, my name is Yves Kukuk. It's, uh, don't try to remember. Yves K, it's okay. The company is Label Internet, and we our only purpose is user experience. We don't do websites. We just work on user experience. It means before using a, a website and after. So, sorry you have to see uh, French websites. But it doesn't matter. Language is not important for us now. This is a French newspaper, one of the main newspaper. This is a web page. And please look at it. So this picture is seen by the brain almost like it is. Not really. In fact, it's white and gray, not colored. What the eye transmits to the brain is not colored, except some little points we will see thereafter. And birds. So this is what we see. <laughs> what is he saying? Am I living now? <laughs> you may if you want to. But no, that's true. What we see, what 99% of our eye can see is that. Black and white, blurs. In fact, they transmit some information, black and white, blurs. And the brain immediately got a colorful and very sharpened picture. But as it doesn't come from the eye, it comes from elsewhere. And elsewhere is my imagination, what I believe it is, not what it is. So, in web design, or interface conception, in a way, we always think about my interface and the picture on the user's brain. No. Please try to think my interface seen by the eye, and then from the eye to the brain. Because if we consider this, this is a false shape. If we consider this, this is what really happens, and why. That's what I will try to explore now. <laughs> so it starts like that. But, oh, sorry. Mystical. So what is the eye? Sphere. Very well done sphere. It is easy, well shaped for moving this little sphere without big efforts. Few muscles and few energy to move it, to, to make them move right there. To, and the whole eye is covered with retina. Retina is as cells. Ah, sorry, and fovea. Fovea is a small point close from the optical nerve. Very, very small. So here it is big, big, big for you to see it. But in fact, it is a in medium human being uh, about one millimeter wide. One millimeter, not more. And so retina, the whole part of it, is lining the entire back of the eye. It is covered with road-shaped cells. We call them roads. And there's absolutely no color. In fact, roads cannot uh, be activated by colors. But sometime to time, you have one other kind of cell that can see colors. So you have a little bit colors in this big part of the retina. The vision is blurred because the adaptive mechanism here is not made for seeing from th this axis or this axis or 
another axis. It is only shaped for this axis. But it is very, very sensitive. You can see, almost at, at night, you can see with retina. If, uh, if you have been training in the army, and at night, they, they teach you not to watch something, just watch uh, beside what you want to watch. And then you will see it. That if, because you will see with the retina, which is very sensitive. If you try to see with the fovea, we will see how it works just after, you won't see it because it needs a lot of time. So it is very sensitive for movements. If you are looking this picture, and I do hear a little movement, but no. Don't watch me, don't watch the picture. So you will see there is a movement. Not what it is, not how many fingers I had, but you will see there is a movement, something moving. This is important for human beings. This is how we survive. When we were in the savanna, you were reaching up, and beginning to watch. Am I going to die? Is something aggressive to me? So we have to see movement as wide as possible. And faces, because when I see movement, I have to know is this friend or foe? Is this someone who is going to kill me? Or is this bit I can hit if I kill it first? And it is very, very wide. Just one little example. Oh, this is a road. This is the form of a road. Who's not driving? OK. When you're driving and you pass a car, you're just passing a car. You are focused on the way. You don't want to have an accident. You are looking for words. But if the person, the driver of the car you're passing is watching you, you know it. Or if you are passed by a car and the driver who passes you is watching you, you are also focused on the way. But you know it. Because on this 1 in 75 degrees vision, you see faces. So if a face turns on you, it's not a sixth sense or something like that, it's just vision. You see faces, and funny, you see snakes too. Survive. So, this is written of you. Welcome to your eye. The other one is fovea. This little, little part of cell, group of cells here. Um, it is less than 1.5 millimeters in diameter. This is for a superhuman being. Usually, you have less than one millimeter. Very, very tiny visual, uh, visual uh, field. It is two to four degrees. It depends on the back shape of your eye. It is absolutely sensitive to colors in red, in blue, and in green. Yeah, the same, exactly the same. Clear vision. But it requires light. If you have no light, you have no foveal vision. And cones, those conic cells, are red, green, or blue. And they just have this little axis they can see sharpened and in color. So around 0 0.4 seconds a century in my mind. I just saw that, a face, the first face. Nothing more. The rest is blurred. And after 0 0.8 seconds, I had a few points lightened by foveal vision. We are close from one second. We are very close from the decision. I will stay, I will leave. This is just, yeah, and this is a little bit too wide to to show the truth. We don't see more than broad vision. And we, we will have some testing to make sure, for you to try to be sure I'm not a uh, full guy. So gaze is, I have foveal vision points to points to make sure what it is. I imagine in the blur vision something, and I check what it is. I check the color, I check the form, I check the, the letters, if I have to read. So the brain commands the eye to fix different points, seeking for details. So he wants to have places to places, precise shape, and colors. And we call saccades, I will speak, if you allow me, I will speak of saccadic view, 
from time to time. That means the succession of points. I want to know perfectly what are the letters, what are the colors, what is it exactly. So guest succession is called saccades. Clear vision comes from the fovea, and we call it foveal vision. And we say para fovea, so sorry, but for everything that is around. And it is confusing. We will have an exercise. So don't look at me. You will have a little hair cross. Please stay focused on the center of this hair cross. Four or five seconds, please. And you will have a text appearing under. But if you say focus on the center of the hair cross, don't move your eyes and know what you can see. It's okay? Okay, so for those who are in the middle part of the room, if you didn't move your eyes, you saw only that. Perhaps a little bit more. But not, you knew there was something, but you didn't see it. Because your eyes were there. For those on the second part of the room, perhaps you saw a little bit more. If you saw in this circle, or you are very tired, or you are drunk, or you really don't like me. <laughs> because your eye can only see this little part, sharply, not more. Meanwhile, my brain, he has an absolutely perfect picture but absolutely false. It doesn't know what is, unless I checked point by point, what is, what is it I'm saying, I imagine. But it tries to improve and it organize, it's organized by this, to, to drive eye movement. <laughs> Where is your first look? We have another little experiment, please. Just watch those pictures and what do you, what is your first glance on the picture? And we will try to explore common points of first, first case. Not so difficult. Did someone see this first? So, for this one, what did you look first? Sorry? The? The waves? Did you? Okay. Uh, uh, I think it's a guy. But we can dream. <laughs> uh, you know, those uh, Hawaiian guys are uh, surfing. <laughs> it is possible to see the waves, yeah. Why not? Most of the view will be driven to human being, person, possible danger. But not all of them. But most of the answers were. And there. In fact, if we have statistics on eye tracking about that kind of page, we have 90, 90 92% the eye, the face, about 7% the hands doing just the first perception of potential danger and then something else. But you may consider when you want to create an interface that those elements are the first element that will have a, a gaze. And there, who knows everything? shape. Who believes in it? It is true. So you have reading shape. And then, the difference? Yeah, the face. 
And if I show this picture, I will have about 96, 97% of vision beginning there if, uh, for a Western reader. And if I show this picture, I'll have 50% beginning there. And the other one here, there's a face. So we call it the focal point, the first gaze point, the first most probable focal, uh, point. First gaze, most probable. So they discover a visual field begins with the focal point. This is very important. This is where we can drive reading of our page. And what works is faces, snakes, hands, which means actions, teeth, teeth. Oh. It's not the same. Preeminence, we had this red block in the middle of a uh, black shapes. Preeminence. And reading starts. This is uh, funny uh, for the F shape. It starts from the focal point. For instance, F reading, yes, when the content is in F. If you should have, uh, like in poetry, X content, you should have X reading, which might be interesting. Um, so, we have a probable focal point here. And what you should know is the, the longer is the distance between focal points and one possible interaction, the fewer gaze I will have per second. Here, it is possible around it to have 12 to 15 gazes. So I can uh, uh, get a lot of information around the focal point. But if the second point I might read is very far, the probability comes down very, very quickly because I cannot have gazes because I have to move my eyes. And it's a long way to move my eye. And I can have approximately a maximum 15 movements per second. But if it is close, if it is far, it would be a smaller number of movements. Another point, which is very interesting, you always use it if you use bootstrap or things like this. But most of them, I, I don't know many terms about uh, computer science, so when I know one, um, my eye can be oriented from 15 to 25 degrees. 25 is a big maximum. Well, here I'm moving my head, but if I don't move my head, about 15, 20 degrees, which means if I have a container on the screen, like a bootstrap container, which is about 1,200 uh, pixels or something like this, please pardon me for that, I don't have to move my head. If I use the wide shape of a screen, I have to use my head, and it is about a thousand times more it needs about a thousand times more energy. Do you want me to be tired using your interface? You may watch that Facebook, perhaps. Facebook interface is dividing activities. So I have my face turned on one activity, and then it's in the 20 degrees I can move my eyes. Then I turn my head and go to another activity. I'm not tired of that because I just have to, to move my head once or two per minute, two times per minute. But if I have to, to move my head, I'm tired and I quit. So my brain is trying to optimize how I will organize this gaze and we'll have a game about it. I wish you have very good visual memory because it comes from here and we use tra eye tracking. Everybody knows eye tracking? And, well, in fact, blue, just rem to remember blue points mark the user's gaze. Don't try to match the gaze and the mouse position. It never has, except when I gaze on something, decide to act, and then I act. And when the blue point grows, it means the gaze is longer. Okay? Thanks, Jacob Nielsen. This is an eye tricking. You see, it's fast. This is just 
how people look. He was looking outside. Perhaps he was, uh, his phone was ringing. It's fast. Let's have it slower, just to try to perfectly imagine what we are testing now and how we are testing this. Could someone tell me what we are testing here? It's not possible to tell me you know what, because you're focused on the gaze. And we are testing not something in the gaze. What we're testing is this. Does people see this? Or do they try another way? They don't see. So you see the eye. Didn't see this, didn't see parts. Just so a few parts of the internet. Because he thought it might be there. Try it. Oh, it might be there. Try. It might be there. Try. And this is a very deceptive situation because it's not anywhere. I didn't miss any function or uh, action potential. I just didn't see another element outside. So the brain ranks elements, tries to imagine and predict what will be the first uh, thing I have to, to seek and the second one and so on and try to give them rules, and try to create a hierarchy. Is it a good pronunciation? Hierarchy? Hierarchy? Can you say it for me? Yeah. <laughs> like he says. Uh, and the, the, the use of it. So, dear Vladimir again. But before I saw this, before first case, in my Paraphoral vision, I shaped it. I, I, I created areas to say what are potentially the areas I will begin with. He shaped, and okay, this is a title, this is certainly navigation. Perhaps I will see this, this area, and this one certainly not there are ads. It is not a connective process. I don't decide looking at it. Say, I will see it or not. It's on the blur vision. It looks like, and I decide not to go there. And when I decided that, it's final. No appeal is possible. If I thought it is an ad, and I don't want to look at, I will never look at this part of the shape. So we have a little, another video. And this video, it's uh, user testing with eye tracking on the um, travel website, old shaped travel website. The third of the website, a column, show me, go to London, uh, your free travel to London. Blinking, blue, very contrasted, and so on. Go to London. And the purpose of the, to, the task for the user is manage your trip to London. So they have two-thirds of the page to manage, or one-third of the page to click free travel to London, or free weekend to London. What do you think they do? Here it is, huh? Someone heard about banner, bl banner blindness? This is banner blindness. This is true. This is, I had a shape. This shape is outside my scope. I will not watch at it. Never. You don't have the whole test, but for 45 users, one. One went there. The official number of uh, uh, banner sites is 20 percent, which is absolutely not true. But it is a, um, a negotiation between a big uh, analysis, eye tracking company like uh, NN Group and so on, and uh, advertisers. The real number is about two or three percent, percent of persons 
going to uh, look at ads. So we say, okay, 20%. That's not true. So they don't. This is banner blindness. This is not magical. This is just, I have the, the shape in the blur of vision, and from that shape, I decided to, to create a scope, the place I will work with and look at. So, this is significant area. It means I decided there there were a title, there were menus. If I need menu, I will go and see there. If I don't think I need menu, I will not. I decided these were ads. I had, there were an, a little area, I said perhaps, if I'm interested, I will perhaps go there. And there were many areas I said, no, I don't want to look at that, and I will not. But perhaps some of you say, yeah, but I remember the page. I, I, I have a good memory of what's on the page. So this is true, but this is not true. Let's have a little test. If, if I don't find something in this area, bounce, I go. I'm looking for something, it's not in the significant area, I go. I don't, it, it doesn't exist for me. And there's a very big relation between the real significant area, what is the purpose of my, of my site, and what is the area, the, the, uh, the rate of surface on the page, and the bounce rate, page views, and time on site. Just augment the significant area, and you have better statistics on website immediately. So we made it for our French uh, online newspapers, and it was always verified. Those who had better significant area had better uh, bounce rate, lower, so, and better time of time on site and better uh, page uh, page read. Okay. Meanwhile, I'm very very sure I can remember everything. I know the page. I know everything that's in it, as I see you all, or as I see the all of the colors around me. That's not true. We'll have a test. My brain wants to believe he knows everything. Let's. Five seconds is quite enough for everybody to memorize absolutely what's on the page. So, what's on the page? Okay, what's the title? My God. <laughs> Uh -huh. And what is this? Okay, it's French. <laughs> but is this an ad, a picture, a list, uh, an article, a list? Yeah, it is. It is an ad. What for? Don't you remember you saw this, this page 10 times and the last one for five seconds? Do you have to do it back again? No, you can't remember. It is for Le Monde itself, an event from Le Monde. But we don't remember. And that, how many titles, how many pictures? So we don't know. We think we know, and when we need to be sure, poof, a gaze. We need to have a gaze. Without a gaze, we don't know. In reality, our blind, our brain is blind, absolutely blind. He imagines, you know, but he wants to know the eye. I don't remember myself, so <laughs> we have to see it. And this one? You could have a shape to, 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 to try. Same thing. You can remember very simple uh, organized information. Same thing. This block is the same. That is, if I remember this one, I know the other one. That works. <laughs> Not exactly the same, same shape, same structure. Yeah. And there. This is an ad. What is it for? It was? Yeah. It was a green one, you're right. And for Le Monde again. 
and this one. The color of my brain imagines he knows he doesn't know anything. Sometimes my brain is my most important enemy for cognitive skills. Okay, it's blue and it's for the month again. They don't have advertisers months. They just advertise for themselves. I don't know. So my brain imagines things. It doesn't know things. But psychologically, it should be so difficult for me to know I don't know that the brain says, no, you know. Don't be afraid. It's okay. You know it. So we'll have a small exercise. I love it. And this is not a ball anymore. This is Amanda because a, a um, student of mine offered me and her name is Amanda. So don't break Amanda and catch the ball, please. And oof, move on. Ah, let's play. You know, it's important for you to play it. So you see the, the movement, and I can have a rest by this time. <laughs> so this was why. Do you know where this is? Uh, I don't know if it's typical of France. OK. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it's okay. <laughs> oh, <no, you> know. <laughs> what you've done is magical. Because this is ballistics. And the equation of ballistics is. Uh, <coughs> I know you are very high level and uh, person says, so. oh yeah, uh, the comma, the comma, you're right. <laughs> but I don't, don't know where to put it, <laughs> in fact. Okay, that's what you did. Wow. No, sorry, I'm lying. You didn't do that because this is uh, for the, one part is from Einstein and the other one is from Newton. And we cannot do compute that fast. We don't. What we do is this. In our life, we saw balls. Well, we say balls? No, I don't know. Um, we saw, we, we've been playing for children and then uh, game, playing, using with, having some in the face, some heavy ones, some uh, light ones, and so on. And we, we are experimented to to know trajectories, to know weight, to imagine the weight of things. And this experience is when I see a ball, a trajectory, I will try to have in my memory a closing trajectory. And I will have some on the lower side, some on the upper side, and I will try to find a good trajectory. And I will act from this memorized movement. I do. You know uh, La Pétanque, French sport with uh, about one kilogram uh, ball? If I do that with a pétanque ball, you don't act like, uh, I will catch it. <laughs> you, you move. And you kill me. <laughs> First you move. So this is just about memory. This is not about computation, what we are doing. You predict the trajectory by successive approximative research in your memory. Someone who never saw a ball will not catch it, may not catch it at the first time. It's not humanly possible. Uh, one thing important, why our brain does this like this? Because eye movement is 15 clear shapes per second, which is nothing. And memory, it's a million, more than a million times faster. So I have the time to, to create a very good and nice picture that fits on me. And uh, it's very long to see it with the eyes, so it's better to have it directly in the brain. But the brain is self-conditioning. It depends on the contact, the intention, the aim. What am I doing? Why? 
Usually, if I don't have a talk, when I, this, this speech, which changed time to time, but uh, we, we began this 12 years ago to, to, to speak about four wheel vision. And we had this, uh, th this test with the ball, sending the ball. But I didn't speak before. I didn't say to people, hey, hey, this is Amanda, uh, and tell a story about it and make this exist on your head. And I just throw it first. Because no one could imagine they should be dumb enough to do that. So it was an absolute surprise. But if I make it an exit, and now it, it's noisy too. Uh, I love you. Uh, OK. We have a cognitive situation. The, the object exists, and then it, there will be an interaction, and I will interact with. But if the object doesn't exist, there's no interaction, there's nothing I can imagine in my mind. So all those processes won't exist. So, Yarbus is um, the creator, the inventor of eye tracking. He was also a man of the KGB psychologist in the KGB. You will speak. But he was the inventor of the eye tracking. And Yarbus is presenting a unique picture to people. Uh, traditional uh, Russian uh, <coughs> painting, but asking different questions. And the eye tracking is a very old with laser eye tracking. It's a big machine you are fixed in with a very small screen, but it works. And we see the case. Where are the eyes? And watch this. This is a picture. The picture, sorry. And we ask the person, are old our persons in this picture? Old. Face. Mostly faces. But now, same eye tracker, same picture, same subject. How long was the visitor gone? Time. Time. Oh, complex concept. Time. One is searching for the clock. Time. Faces too, but hands a little bit. And movement and shoes. Everything that should. Bring me in the time, how long, long. And then what were they doing before you arrived? Hence. So we are not looking the same thing in the same way if our purpose is different. This is very important, and this is the basic of what you need to imply in your interfaces. So the brain organized saccades. Oh, will be case ordering saccadic eye, saccadic eye movement depends on intention. What I think I have to do, and the brain again adds things it does not see because I need to have a good shape of what is outside. So this is a very new therapy. It comes from a. The, uh, 1859. This is uh, 150 years ago. And it's always um, not therapy, theory, sorry. Therapy is, Gestalt therapy exists too. Please don't go there. You will lose from that. Um, what do you say? We will go fast. Yeah, can you see the dog? I would like everybody to see the dog, please. Yeah, the head is here, the the butt, what do you say the butt? The, the legs, legs, front legs, back legs. It is difficult to see, but everybody is okay? Okay, now it's okay. So we can go. How those circles are organized, arranged? Lines, columns? Lines? Who, someone said lines? <laughs> we have to speak. <laughs> and this one? Well, it's obvious. Proximity. If things are close one from the other, they are binded somewhere, binded together. This is parafoveal psychology, not foveal. I don't have to look at it. It is on the blur side, I, I recognize. Everything I will show you there is on the blur side. And this. And those. Similarity. They are the same. So they seem arranged like. 
and this. In fact, they're all absolutely different. But this one is more different than the other. So first sight, this one is different. But no, if you look at them, they are absolutely not the same. But in fact, to make sure my, my, my brain to, to have an idea about it, say one is different, which is not true. One is more different than the other. <laughs> what do you see? Not for British persons, please. <laughs> no, what do you see? Yeah, no. You see one red, you don't see anything else. This is nothing. This is just three parts, red parts, broad a little bit. But, okay, messy, no. Your brain says, yeah, messy, no. You saw nothing. And there. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Ellipsis. <laughs> so, nothing else. Your brain sees a cup. There's no cup here. Try to have your coffee with this. <laughs> it might be dangerous if it's hot. Okay, we see continuous lines that do not exist because it is easy for our brain to say there is line. It, it's easier for me to imagine it is a cup than how many uh, ellipses are. It's not possible to memorize it like this. I try to memorize. Memorize, understand, is close from the same. Not really, but close. And to memorize, I make it simple. There, what do I see? Nothing again, but a virus or a mi uh, mine, see mine. Or... And there, I can see a circle, I can see the triangle inside. There's no circle, there's no triangle, but I will not describe it as it is. I will describe it as it is easier for me to describe it. And there, Pac-Man fight, yeah. <laughs> And there, 3D works too. And there, give money, go. <laughs> uh, we see things that do not exist. In fact, if we try to understand, this is very sophisticated to say, on the vectorial point of view, I should, uh, no, we see a panda, faster. And see another thing. So we create implicit contrast to simplify perceptual state. We want to be able to memorize if it's to memorize or if it's important. So make it simple. My wife hates when I show that because I she thinks I, I made her simple. No. Uh, what do you see? Yeah, yeah. No, you see a very complex shape, but in fact you have a a square, triangle, and round. So it's easier to, to remember. So you see something like this, no matter the colors. So we reduce perceived forms to simple objects so we can memorize them. And if, I have to tell you, if, uh, if you have more than uh, seven forms to remember, you give up. You, you can't remember it. It's not possible. And we do this. How do you complete this? Certainly with symmetry. It is not as obvious as the, the rest of the other gestalt items, but so many times we do this, more than 60%. So it is significant. And this one, for the boys first. Uh -huh. so, oh. Sounds like an obsession, you know. <laughs> yeah, most of the time like this. But be very careful about playing with symmetry with an uh, axis, uh, a diagonal symmetry, because it most of the time gives this. So symmetry. Now, little game. What is the background color? Please, don't fight. <laughs> what is the color background? The background color, sorry, in English. Uh, imagine it is white. It is because I'm not really good at changing images, so it should be white and uh, red. Okay? Please. Okay, you, who says white? 
I say no. Who says red? I say no too. I love to say no. In fact, here it is red. Here it is white. What is the background? Oh my god. It's where in the CSS I no. A background is where there is less detail. When there is more details, it is the foreground. When there is less detail, it is the background. So in the picture here, I have two backgrounds because I have many details in red here, so the background is white. And I have many details in the white shapes here, so the background is red. But always remember the background is not where you've been writing background color or background uh, something. It is where there is no detail. If you put many details in the background, this is not the background anymore. This is the foreground. And your fields or form or very important information you are going to rely on are the background. Be careful of that. So what is significant, what is in front, is where there is more detail, more details. This is not very important because we always, we also saw uh, uh, the, the focal point. But I love Kandinsky. And this is not certainly your focal point. It might be one of those details for reasons we don't have to explain. It's, it's not important. But what is important is, when I show this one, you had the first sight at something. And if you see it like this, it will be the same thing. And like this, the same thing. What's really the position of the picture? This was your focal point. I wish you liked Kandinsky because it was a long moment. So the focal point is where, be where begins visual path, where the saccadic movement begins. And if you know it might be faces, but one face. If there's 10 faces, I'm gambling with the focal, focal point. I don't know which one it will be. Um, last one. Do you agree? I wish you would. Or do you try to read it in another way? Certainly you try to read this. Because the last of the Gestalt items is common sense. If it hurts me too much, I will see it another way. I will try, I will do my best to see it in another way because I don't want to see it like this. And I am right. This is not the author of the book, of the interface, of the article who is right. I am right for myself. So certainly most of you rejected these messages or tried to see it in another way. Last point. Do you see the duck? Huh? No. That was this one. But it is exactly the same cognitive process. How to find a shape in that dot, dot. And you have learned this cognitive process. So the probability to reuse it is huge. Close from certain. You know how to find a dog now. So you will. But this is not the same. Oh, I don't know if it's the same dog, but it's not the same, the same picture. So it, this is just experience. You have learned a very complex, complex processing, and you apply it automatically. And what is very funny with this kind of processes, say, it's uh, 10 years ago. You see the, this kind of picture. The process goes on directly. Exactly like the process when I throw the balls and you get the trajectory in your memory. We are done. That's enough for our brains, for mine. So, remember of those shapes of psychology laws. I heard a lot, I read a lot about, uh, think of them as how do I arrange things to make, to make them obvious. Just for proximity things when, or, or uh, similarity. Things when you create a form and your form looks like a flag like this. Just try to 
make me safe and arrange it. Use them directly. And if we, you need, we can talk after to see practical information. Thank you very much.